Our showcase highlight number nine, Texas number 20, Washington in the Culligan Holiday Bowl. And just another Holiday Bowl. Major Applewhite throws it to Terry Johnson. And that's a problem because he plays for Washington. It's 13-0 Huskies. Applewhite second INT of the game. Our Verge poll then wanted to know, should Major Applewhite be benched in favor of Chris Sims? 64% of the viewers said no. Apparently, not only do you have ESP, and you have ESP. Moments later, third and three, Texas. Applewhite looking for B.J. Johnson. This fellow's going to play on Sundays and be paid handsomely to do so. A great grab over the shoulder. 43-yard touchdown. Applewhite feeling better. After a Husky pick, Applewhite back at it again. Roy Williams. This guy's also going to get paid. What a catch. Applewhite bouncing back. Texas now leading by one. Later in the second, Washington is up, and Applewhite, uh-oh, that's another pick. Marquise Cooper, Applewhite's third interception of the half. Our Verge virtual coach for Texas, Dick Tomey. Coach, what are you going to do, make a switch? Given any thought to changing quarterbacks, going no. to Sims? No, because I think Applewhite showed uh, what he's made out of when he came back. The last interception was a drop ball, and I think it just need to stay right there with him. That's why Dick Tomey is there. Texas down 16 now. Applewhite, Matt Trissel, touchdown. Texas within 10 after missing the two-point conversion. Another Verge poll question. Will the Longhorns come back to win the game? 58% of you said yes. Later in the fourth, 36-33. Huskies, Cody Pickett, and it is Pickett. Eric Johnson off the bobble. Inside the 10-yard line, here come the Longhorns. Applewhite. Trying to give him a lead. He's going to get hit as he throws. And Bo Scape has got it for a touchdown. Applewhite bringing Texas all the way back. They lead by four, but it's the Holiday Bowl. We're not over yet. Willie Hurst, great play call. Inside handoff, and there he goes. 33 yards for six. Huskies take the lead back 43-40. Applewhite on the sidelines didn't look phased at all, and here's why. Looking for B.J. Johnson. B.J. Johnson, another superb grab. Down to the five-yard line. Moments later, not going to throw it. Major going to give it to Ivan Williams. Get me in the end zone, kid. Touchdown. Texas takes the lead, 47-43. Sims and Applewhite happy for one another. Washington's last chance. Fourth down, five to go. Pick it. Looking for a receiver. Can't find one. Scrambling. Son, you got to do something. Just chuck it up there. Got to give him a chance. Applewhite goes out a winner in his last game. The largest comeback, 19 points in the history of the University of Texas. What a night for, te for Major Applewhite. Talk about his numbers in just a moment. B.J. Johnson, six catches, 157 yards. Roy Williams, 11 grabs, 135 yards. Willie Hurst had 134 on the ground for the Huskies. Not quite enough. What a ball game. Major Applewhite, you played like a man. What have you got to say? We, we all refuse to quit. B.J. made two fabulous catches uh, on smash route. Uh, we did a great job as a team. The defense started off rough. I started off rough. Uh, we got things going in the second half. And uh, another great Holiday Bowl. We enjoyed our time here at the Holiday Bowl. And the Holiday Bowl, without a doubt, has the most exciting games. Well, a year ago in this same bowl game, freshman Chris Sims had a rough go of it, throwing it to the wrong color hat four times. Major Applewhite had three picks, but then the senior, who has some sort of magic touch, throws four TDs, sets a Texas Bowl record for passing yards with 473. City Bowl, and there are the aforementioned lads from Chestnut Hill. That's Boston College. Here comes Georgia out of the tunnel. Second quarter, 7-3 Georgia. Brian St. Pierre going to give it to Willie Green, and why wouldn't you? Look at Willie go. 70 yards down the sideline. This is the play that's become awfully popular in recent years. You just pop it out from behind, but it stayed in bounds. Went out of bounds, but not through the end zone. BC would score a touchdown. First and goal in the third quarter. Georgia down by three. Veron Hayes barrels in, but then... Billy Bennett misses the first extra point he has missed all year long. They're only up three now. Still up three. Fourth and five. Dogs go for it. David Green and Musa Smith get all mixed up. They fumble it. Sean Guthrie gets it. And BC marches down the field. And there goes Green again. BC back on top. 20 to 16. George's possession. Two minutes to go in the game. Green looking deep for Terrence Edwards. Flag is going to go down, but it's on George. So now Mark Rick has a decision to make. Kick it or go for it on fourth down. He kicked it. They only had one timeout left. Georgia gets the ball back, but very little time on the clock, and David Green gets sacked by Douglas Goodwin, and the ball game is over. Boston College wins another bowl squeaker over Georgia. They knocked off the dogs in the 86 Hall of Fame Bowl by three. William Green was about a kindergartner back then. Friday night, he ran for a buck 49 against the nation's 15th-ranked rushing D and was named MVP. Could be his last college game. Might be playing on Sundays. BC defeats a ranked opponent for the first time in the last 21 tries. Scored all their points off four Georgia turnovers. Battle in the Lone Star State. Galleryfurniture.com Bowl. 
You got Casey Printers under pressure, and he's going to make an ill-advised toss. Byron Jones going to make a pick and run it back to the one. Second of three picks for Jones in his first career start. Mark Ferris scored in the next play at 7-0. Now, Derek Farmer can't handle the pitch from Ferris, and Charlie Owens... He is going to take it back all the way, 89 yards, second longest fumble recovery in TCU history. Instead of 14 nothing, we're tied at seven, got a ball game. But then in the fourth quarter, not much of a ball game. Aggies start to pull away. Ferris looking for Mickey Jones on the slant, and he takes over from there. Too much speed, 86 yards to the house. Aggies beat the Horned Frogs for the 24th consecutive time. Old Southwest Conference foes, of course. They get a trophy for this win, 28-9 win. The hero of the day for the Aggies, who win their first bowl game, incidentally, since the 95 Alamo Bowl. Freshman Byron Jones, the MVP of the game. Three picks, 77 yards in returns, and three tackles. Had to fight off the flu to do it, saying when he woke up on Friday morning, his stomach was queasy. The doctors hooked him up, and then he just made the horned frogs sick. You disrespect the Mac at your own peril. Chester Taylor, All-American from Toledo, leaving his rocket sauce all over the field with three and a half minutes left. We're tied. Not anymore. He ran for 190 yards, a Motor City Bowl record. Now Cincinnati to tie him. Oh, this was huge. Gino Gattuli throws it into the end zone. Ray Jackson, we're going to show it to you again. It happened quickly, I know. Cincinnati devastated because with a chance to tie the game, Jackson's going to get his hands on the football cannot come up with a catch. Oh, goodness. Tough loss for the Bearcats. Toledo wins the Motor City Bowl. And the three Syracuse, six and five. Kansas State making it bank one ballpark. Luis Gonzalez taking in the first ever football game at Bob. First quarter, James Mungro replay showed he stepped out at the 50, but Bill Snyder doesn't get a coach's challenge. 65 yards, Syracuse up 7 nothing. Mungro, 19 carries, 112 yards, and three scores. Second quarter, Mike Ronsick issues with the snap david tyree drills him orange men recover one of four wildcat turnovers that set up mungro's second touchdown final minutes rj anderson completed only five of 13 passes but this one was good for 52 to johnny Morant. paul pasqualone gets the gatorade bass syracuse wins 26 to 3. they finish 10 and 3 after that 0 and 2 start Mungro, by the way, passed Larry Zonka for second on the Orange's all-time rushing list behind only Joe Morris. K-State finishes 6-6. Six and six. That after four straight 11-win seasons, Wildcats ran for a season-low 33 yards and 34 attempts. Iowa, Texas Tech, the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. Fourth quarter, tech down 16-13. Cliff Kingsbury trying to get that first down. Just short. Red Raiders settle for a field goal. We're tied at 16. Minute and a half to go. Kyle McCann trying to get the Hawkeyes in a field goal range. And it's another scrambling quarterback. This was a huge play. Gets it across the Tech 30. So it sets up Nate Kading from 47 with 44 seconds left. And Iowa wins at 19-16. Kading, who kicked just eight field goals all season, kicked four in the game. Hawkeyes win in their first bowl appearance since 1997. The points, but little trickerations what we had BYU on a fourth and five and Ned Stern stopped short of the first down a tactical error there and Dave Ragone would take advantage Mark the next play he gets it to Chip Natalie throws it to him for the TD Louisville is up 14 to 7 at this point now Louisville leads early in the fourth quarter 21 zip Ronnie Jett receives the ball BYU's Dustin Sealy grass for Jett but he can't hold on and Jett scores a touchdown it's 28 10 Louisville now BYU led the nation in scoring they led it in total offense but Louisville, their defense rose up. And Domain is just sacked right here by Dwayne White and pummeled into the turf. Domain's not happy about that. BYU's last chance, Domain throws it up. It's picked off by Chris Johnson. Louisville has the ball. And Louisville had the game, 28 to 10. They took care of Brandon Doman and BYU and they raised that Liberty Bell trophy. Louisville with its first 11-win season in school history. We're going to Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year with a big day. Dolman not quite as big, trying to lead BYU, who, by the way, was without Luke Staley, who suffered that broken leg late in the season. Silicon Valley Classic, and it was indeed Michigan State and Fresno State. Jeff Smoker looking for Charlie Rogers. Oh, Charlie Rogers. He knew this was going to be a big day. Over 900 yards of total passing yards combined in this one. That one, a 72-yard touchdown to make it 7-7. And David Carr got in the act with Rodney Wright, who would also have a big day. Right here, a 79-yard touchdown that made the score 24-21, Fresno State.
Late in the fourth quarter, it wasn't all passing. Fourth and inches. Actually, this should be uh, late in the second quarter on a fourth and one. T.J. Duckett busting it to the outside and scoring. And Michigan State had a 10-point lead in the game, but Carr would answer. Yep, he read the blitz perfectly, flipped it out to Paris Gaines, and he takes off 15 yards from the outside, 37-35 Spartans, and then following another nice drive, Smoker to his tight end Ivory McCoy, wide open for the touchdown, 44-35, and then Carr would finish it off, Reese, right here. With a little pick, Roderick Maple stepping in front, Carr didn't do much wrong on the day. He threw for over 500 yards, three touchdown passes, but he got picked off there. He was already down nine and running out of time. And Bobby Williams gets himself another bowl victory. You'll recall in his first bowl opportunity, he beat Florida when he took over. 44-35 final in this one. Fresno is 0-4 in bowl games under Pat Hill. And we saw the highlights of Charlie Rogers and Rodney Wright and what they did in any bowl game all time. Look at the most receiving yards, the top two in this game today. And the next two from Michigan State and Fresno State, Bad Moon Rising and Stephon Page. Oh, the state guys know how to put the ball up. They like that number two, Mark, 246, 299. Receivers getting it done. Huge numbers on the day for those wide receivers. Down in the Sun Bowl, a great set of receivers going for Washington State. Purdue's passing offense has struggled at times, and it certainly does. When Jason David picked off the freshman, Kyle Orton takes it back. Pick six made it seven to nothing. Seven nothing game with Jason Gesser looking for the basketball star, Mike Bush. Six foot six, Mike Bush goes for the ball, catches the ball, 46 yards in for the touchdown. Easy as a layup. Averaging nearly 13 points and seven rebounds per game and got a touchdown there, but Ty Taylor Stubblefield got in on the act as well. He had an outstanding afternoon for Purdue. Orton hitting him right on the money. He would have a three-yard TD reception later in the drive. Tied it at 17, tied at 20. Gesser to Jerome Riley and making some yards after the catch. Gesser would end up scoring on a one-yard quarterback. Keeper Cougars up by a touchdown. Two minutes to go. Washington State up 33-20, Orton for Stubblefield. Launches it deep for Stubblefield, 51 yards on a touchdown, throw and catch. Boilermakers trail by six. And the onside kick, and Seth Morales would come out of there and cover it up, and Purdue has one last chance, and Orton, who threw an all bull record, 74 passes as that one knocked away, and Wazoo gets the Pac-10, its first win of the bowl season. 33-27, Orton was 38 of 74, not quite the 83 that Drew Brees threw a few years ago. From flipping the channels, quite like a little snow in a bowl game, humanitarian bowl in snowy Boise, Clemson, Louisiana Tech. Woody Dantzler drops back, low to time, his last collegiate game. Bernard Rambert gets this, and no, not bringing him down. Breaking the tackle, off he goes. I think snowblowers would work. Huh. Go to field. No, absolutely. You don't like that? No, I don't like that idea either. It would look good. You could leave the field. Not in this blue stuff, though. Trickeration! Dantzler! <laughs> Darius Curry! And it, well, it, it didn't really work, but then it worked. I don't know how many people had fooled. <laughs> the Curry goes in for the score. Clemson wins big 49-24 in the snow. Big play Peach Bowl, North Carolina, and Auburn has Julius Peppers. Outstanding player on defense. Maybe the number one pick in the draft. He decides to come out. Jason Campbell out there to Tim Carter, who gave it up. And Joey Evans picks it up, and he's going to run it down inside the 10-yard line just a couple of plays later. Willie Parker will do it on the ground for Carolina. And he has a touchdown on his mind. He went over 100 yards. Auburn's given up over 500 yards in his last two games rushing. It's a 10-0 game. Ronald Curry. Did I mention the Tigers have had trouble stopping the run in the last couple of games? Ronald Curry, this guy when he came out of high school was rated ahead of Michael Vick. He goes into Michael Vick's house and goes 62 yards to the score. And Ronald's fiance much pleased. Might even encourage him to play basketball again. Later in the third quarter, check this out. Curry scrambling. Carlos Dante's going to pick it off and get creative. And no, uh, oh, that is not allowed. Let's get it again. Mr. Dansby, welcome to Sports Center. Because <laughs> you will be on it, my yeah, friend. for six years. <laughs> wow. At least. A very athletic play. They did give him the interception, but you can't ladle it full like that. Ryan Sims would come back and harass Jason Campbell. It wasn't so much Pepper as the other guys who were all over Campbell for most of the night. And the North Carolina defense pretty much controlled the Auburn offense all night. And Carolina wins it 16-10. They won five straight bowl games. Parker finished up with 130.